set of authorities are investigating. Are there any, um, aside from the group you mentioned, anyone else investigating this to see if any criminal action was done here? I can't tell you what uh, Manti's representatives have done in, in that regard. Um, I know they intended to pursue his rights fully. As it relates to the university, our loan engagement or referral was to the private firm to do the, do the report for us. Can you, use, you talked a little about what, you, what you're talking about. Can you say what you've seen or what the investigators saw that would, um, some people that, you know, obviously don't know the whole story, but question whether Manti was behind the hoax. Yeah. What have you seen that would, that would prove that, that it could not be the truth? Well, there are several things. Um, one is, I would refer all of you, if you're not already familiar with it, with both the documentary called Catfish, the MTV show, which is a derivative of that document, documentary, and the sort of associated things you'll find online and otherwise about catfish or catfishing. It is a scam, probably revealing my television watching habits, but it was covered by Dr. <laughs> Phil extensively recently, um, that follows the exact arc of this. Um, and it's perpetrated with shocking uh, frequency for me, shocking as an older guy who's not, not as versed in the online world, but and it is, it is just as this one, an initial casual engagement, a developing relationship online, a subsequent trauma, traffic accident, illness, and then a death. Um, and you know, as hard as it is for me to, to get my arms around this, there's apparently some sport in doing this and being able to do it successfully. So that was one that we sort of found this external um, guidebook, if you will, or, or platform for doing this. Two are the internal consistencies, right? As we probe, ask questions, um, wanted to make sure it all lined up with what we knew independently, the facts as we understood them. We're very comfortable with the consistency and how it all fit together. Um, thirdly, our investigators, um, through their work, were able to discover online chatter among the perpetrators. That was sort of the ultimate proof of this, the joy they were taking, the sort of casualness with which among themselves um, they, were, they were referring to what they had accomplished and what they had done. There were some reports when early in the year when this was going on that Manti and um, Keku had, had met and spent time together in Hawaii. Did he explain how those came to be? He did. Um, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Manti tell the story um, because he deserves that right. But I will tell you this was exclusively a, a, um, an online relationship. Do you know yet when and where he might be available to tell us when he plans to come out and tell us story? I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm under the impression um, that sometime tomorrow uh, he will be, but I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the details of that. And then last one, did, did anybody at the school or with the football team, after Kikua's supposed death, try to reach out to her family and extend condolences in any way that's from the university? Not from the university. Uh, the Teo family and Manti himself did. Um, I'm not aware, now someone in the football program may have, but I'm not aware of, I did not, and I'm not aware, not aware of anyone else that did. But again, given the elaborateness of this, there was a place to send flowers, and you know, that was, there was, there was no, no detail of the hoax left undone in that sense. Jack, over here to your right. Yeah. By your discussions with Manti, when then would, would they meet? How long had this been going on? Um, I don't, Eric, I don't remember the exact length of time. Um, but it, had, it, it, it began with an online um, reaching out uh, to him um, that he, he responded to. 
I, I guess the re reason I asked is, you know, Brian Tao had mentioned uh, an in-person meeting to me and, and several in-person meetings that this had been all the way back to 2009. Um, does, the, does your timeline go back that far and how do you explain, again, the differences in that story with what you're characterizing as a purely online situation? I think I think the, the timetable does line up, Eric. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I think that's right. Um, and it, it um, I, you know, I, I think as Manti tells the story, you'll, you'll see the same thing I saw that it does it, it does fully uh, line up. I will forecast it in only in two ways. One is um, when I first talked to Manti on the 27th about this. And we went through it, um, and I asked him to take me to, to the beginning. He began by saying, we met on. And I said, what do you mean, you met on? It was an online meeting. He used the verb, we met. And he was referring to an online meeting. You know, a, a, he responded to an online inquiry. That was the first time he met her. Um, and as part of the hoax, um, Several meetings were set up where uh, Lene never showed, including some in Hawaii. And, and did he talk about uh, a brother that was involved in the hoax, a supposed brother that was involved in the hoax? There are a remarkable number of characters involved. We don't know how many people they represent. Um, there are male and female characters, brothers, cousins, mother, um, and we don't know if it's two people playing multiple characters or multiple people. Um, but again, it goes to the sophistication of this, um, that there are all these sort of independent pieces that reinforce elements of the story all the way through. Somebody else call it, brother, cousin, etc. cetera. And, and the tip off in his mind was the phone call, the one that came from her number, the, what was her number before, that was when he suspicious not before that well uh, more than suspicious I mean he became startled shocked um, and yes that's right he um, that was absolutely the first time and again it goes to my comments about Manti and his character but every single thing about this until that day in the first week of December was real to Manti there was no no suspicion that it wasn't, no belief that it might not be. And so the pain was real, the grief was real, the affection was real. Um, and that's the nature of this sad, cruel game. Was there, after hearing the story and knowing that somebody might, in our business, might find out about it, did you encourage him to say, hey, look, we, we probably should be the ones to tell the story first. No. Um, and, and I'm glad you asked that because I'd like to touch on a couple of elements of it. There was a very vigorous discussion internally about what we do. Um, you know, what, what is my obligation um, at this point? And it was governed by a few things. One is we didn't know a lot. And so until the investigators had done their work, I didn't know whether we were talking about a girl who faked her death, a girl who didn't exist. Um, we just didn't have any of that information. We had no idea as to motive, and that was really significant to us. Um, you know, we're in, a, we're in a unique business here. Um, <coughs> was there somebody trying to create an NCA violation at the core of this? Was there somebody trying to impact the outcome of football games by, by manipulating the, the emotions of a key player? Was there an extortion request coming? And you know, when you when you match the sort of lack of detail we still lacked until we got some help investigating it, with the risk involved in some of these possible scenarios. Um, it was clear to me that until we knew more, we had to 
Just continue to work to try and gather the facts. Secondly, and importantly, and I referenced it before, this is not different for us, notwithstanding that it played out in a very public way. This is not different for us than the circumstances that impact a lot of our students in a host of ways. And we believe very strongly in maintaining their right to confidentiality as students at this university. So from the outset, we established a parameter that this was Manti's story to tell. We wanted to know it would be told, we wanted to know at, a, at the appropriate time when it would be told, but that it was his to tell. Jeff? Jeff? Not, oh, <coughs> not to belabor the point, but just so that, that I'm clear, is it your understanding then that Manti and this woman have never physically met face to face? Correct. Okay. Um, given your knowledge of the law, what, what sort of crimes have been committed here? Would you say, or can you say? I'm not allowed to practice law anymore. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I, I will avoid a legal I I interpretation of this. Uh, let me say in response to that, though, that question had the potential to be central to how you manage this once it surfaced. Because a clear case of illegality would have been extortion. And one very legitimate response, I think, that the Teos might have opted for here was to let this play out and see if that came when he signed a contract or you know, had, had some resources. Um, they opted not to do that, but, but that, those were the sorts of things that impacted the thinking relative to timing uh, and how you, deal, how you deal with this story. You know, as to on its face, I'll let somebody else who's still practicing law interpret as to whether anything that's been done to date constitutes criminal conduct. We didn't, I haven't pursued that question. Has there been a way for you guys, for you and, and the people you've been dealing with, to just comprehend what this is all about? I mean, it's bizarre. Well, as a parent of four children, it's been a really frightening experience. Um, you know, for people my age, this is unfathomable. Versions of this in different forms we would understand, but but the sort of online, social media, virtual nature of this is hard for us, hard for me. I should speak for myself to get my arms around. Um, we know, for example, that these perpetrators did limit themselves to Manti as a target, um, and so my first reaction, frankly, was as a father. You know, the the way in which young people students, our student athletes, my children are at risk in this environment to things like this because you just don't know who you're dealing with. Yeah. You said this is an online relationship, and yet Manti has talked about speaking with a person he thought was a mate. Did a person, in effect, take her position and talk to Manti as if she were his girlfriend? Yeah, and thanks for correcting me that. I mean, it, it, online and telephonic. Um, there were lengthy, long telephone conversations. There was sleeping with the phone on, connected to each other. Um, so all of those, all, all of those things. Um, you know, the issue of who it is, who's playing what role, um, what's real and what's not here. Is a more complex question than, than I can get into. Um, you mentioned that the perpetrators, meant that wasn't the only one you targeted, but other people in Notre Dame or the other the bigger scheme? Or? I'm not aware of anyone else in Notre Dame. Okay. Um, and the, the Deadspin report said that Manti had a relationship with who they thought the perpetrator was, whether it was a cousin or a family friend. Um, is that true, and do you know if that played into the motive at all? Um, uh, that characterization does not square with my information, but I'll let the Teos address it. Okay. And then the last one for me. Um, the day of the national championship game, when you guys had knowledge of this, there was a pregame special on the news morning show about his story. Did you guys know they were planning on doing that? Did you do anything to try to... Talk them out of that. How did you handle that situation? Where did it air? 
I think it was a CBS morning. I'm not, not familiar with it. Okay. So I guess the quick answer is since I didn't know it, I, uh, we didn't. We were very conscious of the fact that we didn't know what we didn't know. And so um, you know, we recognize the challenges of that. If, if Manti got a question in a media session you know, about that, how do you, how do you respond to that? And we, and we recognize the challenge of that, and we, we weighed those difficulties against the, on the other hand, these other issues that affected timing. I'll say one thing, when the investigation concluded, and when we got the first report from the investigators, the one thing we were certain of was that this was coming out. There was too much online chatter about it. it was, there, was, there was not an intention of belief, anything, that this would be a story that didn't get told. It was, it was clear it would. We had hoped the first person to tell it would be Manti, and again, the expectation was that was going to happen next week. Didn't get that opportunity without someone else having told the story, but they'll you know, at least have an opportunity to talk about it in the future. <laughs> Can you explain at all why he didn't do it after three weeks to tell the coaches after he had the suspicions that were got that phone call? He wanted to talk to his parents and he wanted to talk to them in person. He went home for Christmas break. And that's man time. That's, you know, that's the son he is. He wanted to have that conversation with his parents face to face. He wanted to consult with them wanted to get their advice and uh, it was on the basis of that conversation after, after having concluded it that he called us. Yeah. Jack, did Mansai receive any other communication following uh, the incident that it was kind of worked out from the people? Yes, it, it, they continued to be persistent. It wasn't, it wasn't single contact. And when did that stop? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know exactly. It, it, it dissipated in time, in part because he wasn't responding. But I don't know exactly what's going on. And the last question for me, uh, does the Pale Family and Notre Dame uh, intend to publish any part of the reports and findings in the future? We do not. Jack? Yeah. yeah. You mentioned the parties being persistent with man time. Did, that, did you get some more insight into what their motives were? And what did you discover through that continued contact? Well, to, to, they were, you know, everything here had a story. You know, it wasn't, it was, you know, there was, there was, there was another story to explain what had happened and to restart the relationship. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details of that, man, as I can, but, but, you know, the next phase of the hoax was played out. Here's why we did what we did, and now here, here we are back. Um, still in character. To, to be clear, when they tried to restart the relationship after Lene admitted that she had in fact not died. Yes. When you talk about the online chatter that your investigators discovered, what did you discover about the motive at that point? Is, is it, you mentioned sport, was that it? Was there any other motive that, that came to light? Well, all that comes through it is a, is a sort of casual cruelty. You know, they're enjoying the joke. There. You know, it's uh, sort of these, these shockingly um, casual comments about what they were doing and how they were doing it. And in your investigation internally, did you find that Lene had had contact with any other members of the team? Did you speak to the members of the team about you know, what they were called about those conversations? Or was it strictly you only talked to Manti? Man, man, man Make sure I understand. He was at a lot of award shows. It was one in Orlando. Right? Yes. Okay. The investigators, these Notre Dame investigators, that no. were the investigators. No, they're private. They're they're independent private investigators who have a, who had a special expertise in this sort of thing. Who had experience sort of tracking um, online activity. Um, and, and so, while I'm not going to identify the company, that's who. National company, independent. Jack, did um, just to clarify, did, did the team know at any point until did the players just finding out now today, like everyone else? Yes, I mean, um, uh, 
two coaches knew, I knew, um, and Manti had taken a couple of teammates into his confidence. Are you able to tell us which coaches he talked to? Uh, Diaco and Kelly. For those of you who don't follow us, that's the defensive coordinator. The um, perpetrator and the female voice that you said, you know, that they would sleep with the phone up to their up to their ear or whatnot. Do we know where she is? And I'm assuming investigators have had to make contact as an apology forthcoming in the future. Will we ever hear from her, the one who provided the voice? I don't I don't know the answers to that. I mean you you, you wind up with a uh, with online footprints in this case. And, and, and at that point we didn't once we were satisfied we understood the dimensions of this. We shared the information with the Teos and left to them and, and, and the people they'll be working with to decide what next steps to take. And just lastly, what's the university's response to say, you know, the 20-some-year-old fans that are, that have, have experience with this, that say if you've actually never met her in person, it seems slightly deceiving on his part to bring such attention to it? Then you don't know Manti, is my answer. Um, Manti lives his life on his sleep. I mean, he is, he is out there. And as I said earlier, and I don't think this was an accident, they understood, given the nature, the extraordinary nature of this man, the more trouble she was in, car accident, diagnosis of leukemia, failing health, the more engaged he would become, the more, the more focused he would become, and the more dedicated he would and that's exactly what happened here. And, you know, I, for those who are suspicious that that can happen um, in sort of a virtual environment, I think there are a lot of examples out there that suggest otherwise. I mean, this documentary chronicles one of them. Um, but as we've gotten into this, I've been surprised to learn the frequency with which it exists and the cautionary tale it affords to, to those same young people. Um, you know, the people who will be least skeptical of this are the people who, who live their life in the social media as an important component of it. Um, skepticism probably increases with age because it's harder for, for those of us who aren't fully engaged in that medium to sort of understand how it can be uh, used to this effect. Jack, what did you guys advise Manti to say had he gotten a question directly after uh, about Lene? I know he got one question, but it was kind of within context of another question he was able to avoid it, but what did you guys advise him? You know, we, we encouraged him to try and focus forward and focus on the game and not not, not draw attention backwards if he could. And so that was, it was that simple. It wasn't very, very complex. Um, again, we understood the challenge of that, but were weighing those competing interests in a, in, in a way that we felt was the right balance. Sorry, one more. And do you think this affected his play that night? I don't want to say that. Um, uh, I, I will only tell you um, that starting with my interaction on the 27th and continuing today, it's, in fact, it's, it's impacted Manti as a person significantly. And there's a lot of tragedy here. There's a lot of sorrow here. But the thing I am most sad of, sad about, is, sorry. single most trusting human being I've ever met will never be able to trust in the same way again in his life. That's an incredible tragedy. Just one for you, Jack, up to the right. You said several people a few times. Do you have a ballpark of just how many people? We don't because we, we have no idea of all the characters here, how many were one person playing multiple roles. We just, we don't. We don't have any way to know that right now. 
Is there anybody on the telephone that has a question or two? And we'll wrap this up. If you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the star one. 